Just a week ago, I published the first video of this two part mini series. That video was all about HP Electra, and this time around, we will be focusing on the first ever on HP storage cloud management, namely Data Services Cloud Console. Right after this. Hi again, my name is Markus Leinonen and I am your Enterprise Tech Enthusiast. Thanks for stopping by. First, I want to thank Hewlett Packard Enterprise for sponsoring this video and especially HP Poland for hosting me and giving me an opportunity to play around with HP Electro for a couple of days. Over the decades, storage administrators have become skilled at managing arrays using dedicated graphical or command line user interfaces that are running on the array itself or at least somewhere in the same premises. All day-to-day -day operations like monitoring, provisioning, troubleshooting and software and firmware updates is done using these interfaces. This has a few drawbacks though. Managing geographically distributed fleet of storage devices is increasingly cumbersome the more arrays you have. Things get even trickier managing different storage arrays across your data centers, branch offices, edge locations and clouds. To solve these exact challenges, in May 2021, together with Electra Storage Arrays, HP introduced the Data Services Cloud Console, or DSCC, their first cloud-based storage and data management platform. The core idea is to disaggregate the data and the management control planes, letting the storage arrays to do what they do best, store and serve data, while at the same time making administrators' job easier by moving the data and storage management into the cloud. This has lots of advantages, as we will discuss in a short moment. The idea is not new though, even to HPE. In fact, HP's Aruba customers have been enjoying the benefits of cloud-based management for years. Today, Aruba Central is used by HP Aruba customers to manage over a million network devices and tens of millions client devices globally. The Data Services Cloud Console is based on tried and trusted Aruba Central technology, so DSCC takes everything that Aruba has learned and perfected over the years and applies that to data and storage management. That, to me, is one of the most important aspects of DSCC. We are not talking about some experimental beta version, but a battle-proven and customer-based platform. As mentioned, DSCC is a born-in-the-cloud application and there are multiple global instances for better locality. DSCC connects to all your storage arrays wherever they are located. At one glance you can see your whole storage fleet and do day-to-day -day storage operations from one user interface. Then there's the big one, microservices architecture. Think of DSCC as an iOS operating system on which you can install different apps. The platform stays the same, the hardware stays the same, but new services and features can be added. Services and features like AI-driven intent-based provisioning, backup and recovery, migration tools and yes, as one application storage management. At the moment, there are only a few apps available, but I'm pretty sure that we will see many more like Cloud Physics and Zerto, companies that HP acquired recently in DSCC soon enough. In the future, as DSCC adoption and capabilities grow, there will be surely also third-party applications available, and that makes it magnitudes more interesting. So, what's available today? How do you access DSCC and how does it look like? Let's take a look. First, you need to have a HP GreenLake account. Then you navigate to HTTPS common.cloud.hp.com and log in using your GreenLake credentials. Here you'll see three cloud consoles, Data Services Cloud Console for storage and data management, Compute Cloud Console for compute management, and Aruba Central for network management. There's also a link to GreenLake Central from where you can control and monitor all your HP cloud services. So let's click DSCC's App Catalog and then launch DSCC. Here you can see all the DSCC services that I was talking about just a while ago. At the moment we have Backup and Recovery, Data Ops Management, InfoSight, Setup Service, Intent-Based Provisioning and Audit. Backup and Recovery is a cloud-native backup as a service service that HP announced in October 2021. For the time being, it's only protecting VMware workloads, but that's just the beginning. It is being expanded to support cloud workloads and other on-premises workloads. 
DataOps Manager is the day-to-day -day storage management interface that replaces the local management interfaces in the arrays. We can check the details and status of arrays, provisioned volumes, and connected hosts. InfoSight is still today industry's most advanced AI ops for infrastructure. HP got InfoSight in its corner through Nimble Storage Marriage. Clicking this will lead to the familiar InfoSight portal. Setup services make it easy to introduce new storage devices as part of your global fleet. Using ready-prepared blueprints, it's even faster to take the arrays into use. Intent-based provisioning is one of the more interesting DSCC services that transforms storage provisioning from traditional LAN-centric manual process to an AI-driven app-centric approach. This is how it works. All you have to do is answer a few questions and together with InfoSight Analytics data, intent-based provisioning suggests location, array and storage tier for your new volume. Now developers and business owners with no special storage expertise can use this self-service provisioning and build and deploy apps much faster. Audit gives you a holistic view of all user actions and issues in your entire storage fleet at one glance. Overall, I like the minimalistic and clean, almost Nordic design of the DSCC UI. I find the general usage very simple and straightforward for the most part. Exactly how a modern user interface should be. DSCC is still in its early stages and far from its full potential. At launch, only HP Electro storage arrays were supported. Now DSCC also supports HP Primera, with HP Nimble storage support expected by the start of the new year. Storage system support will expand in the future and more apps will be introduced. It's going to be very interesting to see how DSCC capabilities and ecosystem will grow as time goes by. What I want to see in a big picture is all three HP Cloud Consoles, Data Services Cloud Console, Compute Cloud Console and Arupa Central merge. I mean, they are already based on the same microservices platform, so why not just have one platform with multiple apps for different devices and purposes? Just like with smartphones. It would defeat the purpose if you would need one phone for social media apps, another one for work apps, and a third one for everything else, wouldn't it? So it would be ideal to have just one user interface, let's call it Infrastructure Cloud Console, <laughs> through which we could manage the entire global infrastructure. Heck, now that we are wishing, I would like to see just one portal for everything that's even remotely related to HP Cloud. One login to one HP GreenLake user interface, where I could order all HP Cloud services, manage global infrastructure, check real-time invoicing, do forecasting, view alerts, generate reports, tickets, contact support, etc. The main goal of any cloud is to simplify all aspects of consuming digital services and resources that would normally require lots of effort and expertise. In my opinion, user interface plays a major part in all this and in general user experience. As much as HP has put effort in becoming a true cloud company, where it still has work to do is in the overall user experience. Having one simple to use portal for everything HP GreenLake related needs to be a priority. Thankfully, it seems HP is accepting the challenge. As Antonio Neri said a couple of months ago, HP is poised to standardize the GreenLake Edge to Cloud Platform as a Service experience with the new front-end experience at greenlake.hp.com. GreenLake.hp.com will provide a seamless integration and true cloud experience where all HP Cloud services are available for customers to procure, whether it's a Rupa connectivity as a service, Elastic Compute as a service, or workload optimized solutions like SAP as a service. According to Antonio Neri, all this should be available in March next year. As I said, this one is a big one for me, and I've been waiting for this for a long time. I literally can't wait to see what HP has up its sleeves. Thanks for watching these two videos, hope you liked them, and if you did, remember to hit that like button and subscribe. See you with the next video.